have uh, a beautiful, talented, bright young wife, Debbie, and uh, what, what were her feelings when she found out, uh, number one, you were interested in taking the job and got the job as a head coach? She has a busy schedule. You already had a busy one. Um, her thoughts on that? No, I, I, you know, Debbie and the family. I mean, yes. you talk about all, right. the, all the kids, the grandkids, kids. kids. They were probably my biggest supporters. They wanted me to Good. have a team. They liked to follow a team. It's a lifestyle for us. It has been for many, many years. You know, Debbie and the girls in particular, they've been uh, college athletes, at, you know, not the Division One level, but, still. Uh, you know, still they, they, they know about competition and they enjoy, you know, following basketball. You know, this, this year it'll be, you know, anteater basketball on the women's side. But, uh, you know, they, it's more, I get so much support from that end, and they laugh. I mean, even now, right now, Debbie will look at me and she goes, you're thinking basketball, aren't you? And it could be 10 o'clock at night. And I said, yeah, I've got some out-of-bounds plays running through my head. But every coach does that. Of course. You know, and then she's, you know, she'll be at the games early watching teams warm up. She likes to watch the opponent warm yeah. up and make make her own evaluation of, you know, what to look for. So, I mean, like I said. She's knowledgeable. It, it, she is, and it's, it, uh, I use the word already, it's a lifestyle for us. Right. And we sort of put a lot of things on the back burner for from October through March, you know, for that six months, five and a half, six month stretch, because it's just the, the way it's been for many, many years. But it, 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 it's good. It's good for us. So you'll have to put that hobby of yours, gardening, on hold for a bit, huh? I still, when I get to... You know, either I'm cleaning because I get nervous. You'll see me even on the bench when I get nervous during the game. I felt a fold of towels. I'm sort of backward. You know, like that's Tarkanian used to you chew on. Them, yeah. I fold it and then I grab another one and fold it as I'm watching. It's just a, a nervous habit. Right. But uh, I go out to you know clear my head. Um, you know, I'll go out in the yard and just start pulling weeds and trimming shrubs that don't need to be trimmed just to you know get get my head clearer and get along. Sure. I, and when I was at Idaho, now you know, dead of winter, right. uh, we'd lose a home game. You know, when that happened, we'd lose a home game. I'd go home and start shoveling snow. And when my neighbors would get up, maybe I'd shovel their uh, walkway also. They said, "Oh, it was a tough game because coaches sh shoveled three houses." You know, it'd be ten o'clock. I'd be outside shoveling snow. Just what to, an amazing story in idiosyncrasy! Know, Thank you for sharing every, that. Everybody had, yeah. you know, coaches. We have our own yeah. little things, but I'd get home and bundle up and I'd go out and start shoveling just to get that anxiousness out of my system so I could get some rest and get back to work the next day. Absolutely, and, and you are an awfully hard worker. Doug Oliver, our guest, we have a couple more minutes with the coach. By the way, the first exhibition game for the UC Run women is October 30th. As we tape on a Monday, the show airs on Tuesday, two weeks from the time that you will hear it. That will be against Cal State San Marcos. Their regular season opener against Santa Clara is November 9th, and you can go to the, the women's basketball webpage, and they'll have all the information of home and away games. Most of the games will be live on 88.9 FM KUCI, and if they're not, and there's only seven or eight that won't be live on the radio, they'll be on the Internet. Darren Preston will have the play-by-play -play for you. Doug, uh, how do you see the conference this year? Uh, last year, I mean, Santa Barbara came from nowhere, but that wasn't really a surprise. It was so... Um, evenly balanced uh, last year where, where teams were knocking off each other uh, as best you can tell. I mean, you haven't obviously seen who everybody's brought in, but how, how do you see the conference well, this year? Well, you know, Santa Barbara actually finished, you know, you know sixth six or so, and they ended up uh, beating us in the first round here, and we were dinged up. We just weren't healthy. You had half and we'd a team. Beat, and we'd beaten them twice during the regular season, and they went on to win the tournament and go to the NCAA tournament. That's mm -hmm. just Big West basketball. Right. Now, uh, Cal Poly was very, you know, at the top of the league along with Northridge. Northridge lost a center that was unstoppable for us. I mean, yeah. they had some, you know, because we didn't have size and she could, you know, she was experienced. She could really uh, score the ball from 12, 15 feet in and was, you know, very difficult for anyone with her back to the basket. But, you know, with her gone, there's, they had a lot of underclassmen. So they, I think Northridge could be a very, very good basketball team. Cal Poly lost, you know, one of the top players in the conference, right. uh, another type of post player, but, and a couple other kids, but, so I, I, I agree with you in that, you know, it's a little up for grabs right now, right. and it could be, you know, it could be fun, it could be one of those uh, years where there's, every weekend teams are changing that one, two, three spot, and, and so, you know, hopefully we're in the mix, and, you know, we're going to play as hard as we can. I, 
uh, I can't evaluate us until I get a few games under our belt in November or December and you know start watching other teams that we will be in our conference on videotape but I, I do believe that uh, you know we have a toughness that uh, we played with last year that we're going to challenge and be in every ball game. Well the school is smart enough to give you a contract with some length to it I'm not going uh, to tell everybody how many years there's but it's a while and you will win and they will give you some time to uh, put that all over touch on. Before we finish up, I want to identify a really fine staff that you have put together and I'll, I'll let you do the uh, do the talking. Andy Mai, Lauren Bowie, Bowie and Michelle Augustova. Um, tell us about them and your reasons for putting this staff together. Well, I, I was fortunate enough to the year I spent last season on the women's side. I work with Annie Mai and uh, Lauren Bowie. And, yeah. Both of them former players here, right. uh, you know, and so I, I believed in their work ethic. I, I, I think that they have the up, uh, ability to be really good college basketball coaches. But, you know, when you're putting your staff together, you want to cover all the bases of administrative work, personalities, uh, on the floor coaching, recruiting is, you know, the right. lifeline to any program. And they are very outgoing and knowledgeable about this institution, knows, know what it takes to be a good uh, student athlete here. So, you know, I was happy to retain them. And they wanted to be, continue being part of this program. And then Michelle Agostavo, she was, you know, a, a young lady that I was introduced to. And she gets it. She played uh, a couple Great. years at University of San Diego. And then with a coaching change, she transferred back up to University of Washington, where she was a very, you know, very good player at both, both institutions. And she gives us a little different slant uh, on the recruiting and you know different look on the floor. She's you know I I have them sort of pigeonholed in. Lauren works with the post players. Annie being a former point guard, she works with the the point guards. And Michelle being a shooter and a scorer during her college career, uh, she's on the you know working with the wings. So that allows me to move from spot to spot to spot, and uh, you know watch and evaluate right. and you know know what I have to add to practices or take out just by you know what I see and then our ops our operations person is a, a former player at University of San Diego Kiva Herman who you know will be mostly involved with the administrative things and some of the video and she was an excellent fine player during her career and actually played a couple years professionally in Europe so uh, I have a energetic young uh, staff of, you know, of women that uh, will really help move this program forward. Right, and, and being the age, being so close to the players, it, it, it's great for as far as relations and, and just the you know the camaraderie that goes along. Doug, we'll close on this. How do you like the format of the women's side of the conference tournament this year with the, uh, the, the first of uh, the semifinals to get you to the Final Four, which is at the uh, Honda Center? Um, at uh, at the Brent Center. Yeah, well, I mean, it, you a, know, a little bit of a home court yeah, advantage if you get there. I mean, it is if you can get there or play there. You know, you'd yeah. like to to win it, so you can just bypass uh, some of those rounds. Right. But I mean, if you have to play, might as well be at home. It right. didn't work out for us last year, but we were physically, like I've mentioned a couple times, we weren't in that kind of condition to you know probably beat anyone. We were down to four healthy players, but right. you know that format will ha you know may help us if it, if it comes to that, but. Uh, everyone will have played in the brand tournament time. Everyone steps it up. But you sure. know, if you have to go anywhere, you might as well stay at home for that. But sure. I would really like and enjoy watching this team play at the Honda Center if we're good enough. Oh, you will be. You will be, Doug. They're in great hands. It was a great hire. Uh, everybody in athletics that have been around this university and especially the uh, men's and women's basketball programs for years was praying you'd get the job and they were smart enough to do it. We're in good hands. I wish you all the best. Be out to see you as much as I can and, and thanks for the friendship yeah, we, over the years. We have a number, a number of double headers uh, at home with the, yep. the men's program so I will see you and I appreciate the kind words. All right. Doug Oliver is our guest. We'll take a break and be back with more on this edition of the Blue and Gold Report on the home of Anteater Athletics 88.9 FM. KUCI.